just briefly, we don't want to give a long discourse tonight. The main purpose of tonight is to dedicate this center as one of the Ananda centers of life. In 1974, which seems very present in my memory, but as I think about it, it was nearly 40 years ago, I went on a round the world trip with Swami Kriyananda. And our first stop, we came from California, and we were coming toward India, which was our primary destination. But we went from California to Hawaii, and there was the ashram of another spiritual teacher there. And so we visited that ashram, and that spiritual teacher, Subramunya was his name, said something very beautiful to us that I've always remembered. At the end of our visit, which was very sweet and loving and supportive, mutually supportive. And in fact, Swamiji and our group was the first group that didn't belong to their order that were allowed into the ashram itself. So it was, in many ways, uh, he was honoring us. But he said something very beautiful. He said that you have brought your light to our ashram. And here at our ashram, we have added our light to your light. And now you're going to travel around the world. Take the light of our combined works and bring it to the next place and add their light to it. And so on as you travel around the world until you tie a string of light around the world. And it was a beautiful image. I've always remembered it. But now we have not just that one trip, which was the first of many, many trips by people from Ananda. Now we have not just one string of light around the world, but we have many, many, many strings of light that go around the world. And each of the centers, such as this center, becomes now a powerful source of light, like a lighthouse that they placed from ancient times. They knew that, especially when there are storms at sea and it's dark and people are trying to sail their boats, they can't do so safely. And so they would place in a prominent place a lighthouse so that even from a distance the sailors could see that and know how to navigate safely. Well, the world around us has often been compared to the sea of Maya, the sea of delusion. And sometimes, as you and I know, this sea of Maya can get very storm-tossed. For us, that means tests and trials. A beautiful poem by a master, when storms of trials shriek, and when worries howl at me, I will drown their noises loudly chanting God. God, God. And so we know that there are storms of trials and worries shriek and howl at us at times. And at that time, it becomes very, very important in our lives to have a lighthouse because that helps us navigate those periods of difficulties. And that's what this center is for you, for everyone who comes here, for many others. Now, this to a certain extent is where the analogy ends, because it isn't physical light that people will receive here. It's spiritual light, and that spiritual light shines differently from physical light. For one thing, spiritual light is intelligent, and the physical light that we see, it's probably intelligent too, because God is in everything but it seems to behave in a more regulated pattern. But spiritual light is filled with intelligence. A light bulb, this light bulb, expresses physical light, but it's people who express spiritual light. And so each of you will come here, you will bring your light to this center, you will gather the light that is here, and you'll become more filled with light.
And then it is your responsibility and your joy to take that combined light and take it with you wherever you go. And the more that that happens, the more from this center of light, the whole of Chennai and the whole of southern India and the whole of India, and because we found out how many people from India travel around the world, the light from this center will begin to spread and will begin to tie together many, many places. And that is the way that God works. He works through, we will later have a little RT ceremony where we will take the candle and offer it to the masters. But what that really represents is the offering of the little light that is in us into the greater light of God. And that offering of that allows an opening within us to allow the influx. But during that same trip in 1974, we have the, I have the great pleasure of meeting Amanda Norma. And there was a very sweet little scene that happened because people from Ananda knew that we were going to go and see Ananda Mahima. And many people there knew of her and had read her writings and loved her very much. They sent malas or pictures or something precious and asked us to bring these to Ma and have her bless them. And when we had this little mound of stuff that we were wanting her to bless, she said, why do you want this body to bless these things? She said, can't you see that God's grace is always shining down? God's grace is like the sun. And she used the analogy that the sun can be shining down, but if on the windows we have shutters and curtains closed, then that light can't come in. And it's not our job to produce the light that's done by God. But it is our job to open the curtains and the shutters of our mind and our heart so that that, can, that light can flow in. Well, to finish the story, so Ananda Moima said, can't you see that the grace of God is always shining down? We said, yes, Ma, but could you bless it too? And she laughed and, and, then, and then blessed it because, of course, she... She was just playing a little drama, teaching as well as blessing at the same time. But the point here being that this center and other centers of Ananda that are like it are meant to be places where you can come and receive the light and also, especially in meditation, to offer up the light that is in you. Here we do it outwardly by offering that up symbolically to the Guru. In meditation, that is done in a real way because the light that is within us represents also the light force or the energy that is within us. And when we meditate deeply, we can see light at the spiritual eye. We even see the spiritual eye as an image of light, a golden ring with a blue field inside and then a five-pointed white star. So that light is there. That's the light of God manifested in our own body. And in meditation, by looking into that, by offering our devotion to God and to Guru, that's the real RT ceremony. That's the offering up of the light that is in with, within us because when that light force descends, it draws us more into ego. As it ego just meaning our a sense of separation from God. So as it descends, we become more self-focused, sense of separation and uh, contracting in our thinking. Meditation helps us reverse that process, especially Kriya Yoga, and we will have an initiation in Kriya for those of you who have prepared on Sunday. Especially Kriya Yoga helps us to take that light force and offer it up to the spiritual eye, to the light of God and Guru that resides there. As we do that, 
our consciousness begins to open and our whole being becomes filled with God's light. And if we can take that light that we receive and then share it with others, then that's the essence of the spiritual path, overcoming our sense of limitation, our contraction and ego, expanding that ultimately to realize that we are really nothing else except an image of God and God's light. In fact, Master said that our bodies really are nothing more than condensed light, that they are not real the way that we think that they're real. And when he, one time he was looking at his devotees and he said, I see you all as beings of light. You have no idea how beautiful you all are. And if he were here and could speak to us, he would say the same thing. You have no idea how beautiful you all are because residing within each of us is God's life and God's love and God's joy. And that's what gives beauty and light and energy to this world and to everything in it. And so please avail yourself of this center. Come here as often as you can. Take as much light from the ceremonies, from the classes, from the meditations. Take that light and then take it into your lives and share it with everyone you need. Good evening, everyone. I'll share a few words also. Um, in the autobiography of a yogi, there's a beautiful passage where, and when Yoganandaji was a little boy, he was sitting on his bed meditating, and he asked the question, what is behind the darkness of closed eyes? And he began to really meditate on that. He closed his eyes, and then he saw beings of light floating in his consciousness. It was a vision. And he said, who are you? And they replied, we are the Himalayan yogis. And then they merged into a greater light. And again, Yoganandaji asked, who are you, this great impersonal light? And a voice came from everywhere and said, I am Ishvara, I am light. And Master said, I want to be, Master Yoganandaji, I want to be one with you. And then the vision vanished because it wasn't yet time. Yogananda Ji was an avatar. He could easily have merged with that light. He was one with that light, but he came back to help all of us suffering humanity to find that light within ourselves. And those of us who are, have come to this path, even as it says in the Gita, even a little practice of this inward religion, and that is a reference to the practice of Kriya Yoga. Even a little practice of this inward religion will free you from dire fears and colossal sufferings. And so in this great country of India, and in, in here in the city of Chennai, which we've just been here a few days, but the people we have met and the vibrations of the temples, it is a very holy area very filled with devotion, filled with bhakti, and with deep, sincere yearning, and with the reaching out for the light. We need to tune in to our great masters, Babaji and Yoganandaji, and our beloved teacher, Swami Kriyanandaji. They came to bring us the light, and they came to bring that light into the world. And as Stratish was saying, come often to the center, but more than just come, we really invite you to the extent that you are able to find ways to serve, to serve the light, to serve this great mission that Yoganandaji and Babaji have brought into the world. Swami Kriyanandaji used to say, the instrument is blessed by what flows through it. 
Meaning, if we choose to be a channel of light, of joy, and love to others, that flows through us, and we ourselves are blessed. So our path, and when I say our, I mean all of us. This is our path. Our great masters brought it to each one of us. And our path is one of sharing. It's one not just of passively going and being part of a ritual or doing something outward, but it's a path of inner discovery of ourselves as beings of light, finding the divine light within us, and then serving, sharing that light. Swami Kriyanandaji once said these words, and we love them so much, we have them printed up on a big poster in the wall of the offices of Ananda Worldwide, and we remind ourselves often when we look at this. Swamiji said, Ananda is like a great wave of joyful energy that wants to give and give as long as people are willing to receive. And that's our, our mission, to give and give that wave of light, that wave of joy, as long as people willing to receive. And I must say, coming to Chennai, I can feel how willing you all are to receive. So we are honored and blessed to be a part of this new expression, this master's work here in Chennai. And we hope that when we come back next year, and we will, that we will see all of your shining faces, even more radiant, I am sure and many more through the help and service you have uh, given to our two Acharyas, and our Swamis, Ramarajan and Ramini, who are doing a beautiful work to share love and light and clarity. So God bless you all, and we are very, very blessed to be here with you. Thank you. Now we'll do a fire ceremony. Well, he's getting a, you probably know already what the meaning of the symbols are in this, but just in case you don't, I will explain. We will light the fire, and then we will offer two offerings into the fire. First, during the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra, we will offer ghee. Now, he represents, because it is butter that has become purified, that represents emotions or feelings of the heart that have become purified. And when we offer those into the fire, what it is is a symbol of the process in meditation of offering the awakened devotion, the purified feelings of the heart, into the light of the spiritual eye. And then we will chant the Gayatri Mantra as we do that seven times. And then we will chant the Mahamritan Jaya Mantra. And as we do that, we will offer rice into the fire. And what that also represents inwardly is the seeds of karma, the sun scars that reside in the subtle spine during meditation and most especially during and after the practice of Kriya Yoga. Those seeds are brought up and burned up and purified in the spiritual, in the light of the spiritual life. So if we take these seeds and we plant them now in fertile soil, they will grow into more rice plants and more seeds of rice, and that will spread. That's the way our karma is. That if we act from the seeds of our old karma, those seeds sprout into new plants and create new karma for us. And most of that karma doesn't taste as good as rice. It <laughs> has grit in it. So, but if we burn up and purify these seeds in this fire, they won't sprout. If we take the seeds of karma and burn them up in the spiritual eye, they won't sprout either. And then we will be free, ultimately we will be free from all karma, and we will know ourselves to be beings of light. 